Hello, welcome to episode 98 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 9th of January. So, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been up to in the last seven days. So this week we have basically lots of knitting and then I've got lots of plans in terms of sewing. Now this week's sort of make nine are my make nine sewing plans but not dressmaking related. Those will be next week because <laughs> I have these lists of different things I thought I'll save one for sort of each week so that I don't bog you down with too many things in one episode. So this week is sewing related but not dressmaking. We've got a separate one for dressmaking. And there are a few targets I've got for embroidery as well. And then I've got some confessions. Um, and then some information on the sort of make-alongs and cows through the rest of the year at the very end. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find um, all the show notes for the podcast. So there is a link in the down bar which leads you to the website and if you just go to the left hand side of the page there's a menu and if you click show notes and blog posts you'll get to it and it's all in chronological order. Um, so I've not had time to draw any winners for the festive craft along but I will do that next week so if you did participate keep an eye on your Avalry messages and I will um, sort of announce the winners over there um, and we've got the retro mail going on in the Ravelry group as well at the moment which is really fun already we've got lots of references to Doctor Who <laughs> And lots of other links as well. I liked how somebody was doing a, a granny square blanket, which is quite 70s, I suppose. It started off. Um, so that's a sort of tenuous link there. We love that. <laughs> so any sorts of links um, to anything retro, anything before the noughties, really. It's not that long ago, is it? <laughs> and if you've got projects that you've had on the needles since before the noughties, they're appropriate as well. So come and join and explain why they're um, sort of integrated integrated into the retro theme. I love it. It's brilliant. Thank you so much for joining in. So let's get on with the knitting. So first of all, I have a finished object and a finished object that is a garment. So Barbara is going to demonstrate to you um, my finished garment. So Barbara, would you like to come over? So thank you very much, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing my antler cardigan by Tin Can Knits, the pattern. Um, the yarn that I've used for this is um, some Aran yarn that I've dyed myself. At the moment I don't offer this base in the shop but I think I might do in the future. Um, but this, this is my Living on a Prayer colourway which is like a dark grey tonal sort of thing. Um, and it's got some gorgeous, gorgeous cables on the back. I think you can just about see that. I'll lean Barbara over so you can see the cables a bit better. But they run all the way around the yoke. And it's bend you forward as well Barbara <laughs> so they come all the way across here um, and since the last podcast I've done everything I think apart from the button band and grafting under the arms so I don't know whether I've done the button band a bit thick but it did it did say to do it that thick in the pattern I haven't actually put it on yet myself so I don't really know what it looks like on me um, well not since I've put the button band on anyway so we'll see how that looks so I used the needles that were suggested in the pattern um, I basically followed the pattern more or less exactly how it said except I did some short row shaping in the bust area now Barbara Barbara's bust apex is a bit higher than mine <laughs> so you can see this dart shape is slightly in a different direction but it does fit me better than it does Barbara so I did some short row shape in here to give me some um, more area in the bust um, and I think that fits nicely although I haven't had it tried it on since I've put the um, button band on. What I did that I think that was quite important is that when I cast off um, around the neck here I made sure that I did a sort of standard cast off in, um, in the rib so that it wasn't too stretchy so that it holds the shape of the cardigan. I think that's really important um, when it's made in sort of super wash yarn. Um, it, I haven't actually blocked the cardigan properly yet, but um, it doesn't look too bad. I think you can get away with wearing that. <laughs> I absolutely love these cables, really love them. And do you know what? I'd be tempted to knit another one of these actually. It was pretty quick, even though I left it over Christmas. I could have so finished it before Christmas, but never mind. 
I chose these buttons in the end. I'll get Barbara to lean over again. <laughs> Hopefully you can see those. They're a sort of, I'd say they were slightly Celtic in style. Well, maybe not. There's like a pretty um, sort of flowery type shape in there and the buttons are a little bit sparkly underneath but I picked those up from Minerva Crafts and I chose to do 10 um, right down the body because I always like a lot of buttons <laughs> so um, overall I'm really pleased with it I have actually recorded um, some footage as to how I grafted um, the stitches underneath the arms but we'll see if it comes together as a little tutorial or not. <laughs> I'll see how it goes. But I have recorded the footage, so we'll, um, you'll have to watch this space to see if I actually publish it. See if the see if it's close enough um, footage, and you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, because it's a new camera, I'm not quite used to doing tutorials on it yet. So we'll have to see how that goes. So there we go. That's my finished object for this week. Thank you very much, Barbara. So I've decided to show you it on me as well and you can see how the bust does fit a little bit better although the dart should actually point directly towards the bust apex and it doesn't but it does look a little bit better on me than it does on Barbara but I do love all these cables absolutely gorgeous I will give it a little bit of a block so it looks a little bit neater but I think that'll be quite cozy especially around the house when it gets a bit chilly Ta -da! <laughs> so that's my finished objects for this week but I do have some items that I've got on the needle so the main thing that I've been knitting again this week is my Adventina shawl and it's now graded to some sort of browny pinks just started with a lighter colour there um, I'm glad I've put these sort of um, different tonal colours in between not tonal speckly colours in between because I think that gives it a bit of a pop my favourite bit at the moment is this yellow bit I think love that so we're working slowly through the minis that I've um, got for my advent so most of the ones that are tonal the, the sort of more solid colours are from my advent calendar that I had from Flourish Fibres um, so Fee dyes with natural dyes so it's really interesting to see um, which of the dyes come out with different colours when I was opening the advent although can't, can I remember which colour was which oh dear so I've got the next colours that I'm going to be using in this egg box very handy to keep all my minis ready so I'm going to be going on to this one next which has got a bit of brown in um, and then some of the brown that's in the next colour is actually in that yarn as well so I'm it's sort of toning them in together um, but having a little pop of different colour which I think is nice and then I'm going over to this these sort of orangey browns brown again and then sort of purples which will be lovely to work on. I'm very excited about that. So I've got another um, egg box full like this, which is ready for me to use. Or I've organised um, a little while ago. It was quite um, fun to, to have a look at all my minis and pick out the ones that will go um, with the new advent minis that I had from Fee. Some of them are from my friend Jean, who I did an advent swap with as well. Um, but I'm just picking the ones that really tone well together really so if you look at this one for instance this one that looks actually it looks quite pink and blue but there's little aspects of this yellow color in it um, and this um, sort of pale beigey color in there as well so I thought that they sort of tone together but also give a little pop of color on the way so that's coming along so how, how long is it at the moment let's have a look it's probably about a meter I always measure a meter from my shoulder to my hand my end of my finger here so it's just over a meter long and I think I'm once I finish these two I'm halfway through so it's going to be a couple of meters long it's gonna be quite a long wrap um, for the Adventina shawl wrap it's not a shawl it's a wrap <laughs> So the Adventina wrap is by Catherine Stewart, um, and again I used most of the minis uh, from my advent calendar from Flourish Fibres. So that's that on the needles. Let's get that out of the way for a minute. Um, so I have caked up some yarn ready for my round the corner shawl. Um, so 
if you watched last week's episode you'll know that I'm going to do the around the corner shawl by Lisa Haynes and I've caked these yarns up ready to knit it so these are on my sparkle base so this one on the left is here comes the rain again um, and it's like a grey tonal with sort of darker grey speckles and um, this one on the right is you can't Hur hurry love and that's got grey speckles in as well and I thought that they went really nicely together um, and they're both on my sparkle base so that's 75% um, merino 20% nylon and 5% stellina so there we go I'm gonna be casting that on a couple of people were saying maybe we should do a knit along I think we should but I'm gonna do this one on Instagram um, and I'll put a hashtag on the screen I think it's probably going to be around the corner shawl CHM Cal um, just so that a few of us um, can put the hashtag in and then I can see how you're getting on with your around the corner shawl so um, obviously you can use any yarn you like um, but if you do something in a sort of retro related yarn <laughs> you can also put it in the retro cal as well so double dipping is always a good idea in my eye, my eyes <laughs> so um, yes if you're knitting the around the corner shawl don't forget to use the hashtag when you post on Instagram so I can see what you're doing and I will draw for prizes at the end um, so I'm thinking maybe we need two months uh, to knit the around the corner shawl um, so end of February I think I'll draw for prizes for that so don't forget to use the hashtag and I will actually if you don't finish I'll still put you in as an entry if you know what I mean so as long as you join in I don't think you should have to finish but it's nice to have a finished object at the end I suppose <laughs> so that's that's the knit along that I've decided to do as well um, I wanted to chat to you guys about what I'm going to do with my hand spun that I showed you last week. So this yarn at the bottom there is a merino and silk mix that I picked up from a shop in Shrewsbury called You and Ply and I spun it up as a sort of a sport weight yarn in the end. I was kind of going for four ply uh, DK so sport was right in the middle there I suppose. <laughs> And I found this in my stash that I'd spun and I've dyed this actually myself. Um, so this is actually 100% alpaca yarn that I spun. Actually, it must have been several years ago, at least three years ago. So I thought those two would go together really well. So a few people had said, why don't you do the night shift cowl? So I think I should. So the night shift cowl, you're supposed to use spin drift yarn to do it because um, it's sort of got a hand spun effect to, to it where the colours change and this has a little bit so I thought that that actually might work quite well um, and I thought if I spin a third yarn because you need three colours for it um, then that would be lovely to do a hand spun hand knitted cowl with. So that's my thoughts so far. I will keep you posted. <laughs> and these colours are like my favourites so that's always good um, I haven't done any crochet for like ages but I'm working on <laughs> a magic knot ball so this is all the bits if you can see it properly this is all the bits of yarn that I've been collecting from my Adventina shawl and some other little bits I've got as well um, I've been doing a magic knot to make this ball so then I can crochet with it and carry on with my corner to corner crochet blanket so I've got quite a bit here now so maybe I should get into it and stop talking about it and get on with it <laughs> Because I haven't done any crochet for ages and that'll be fun to get back into. I also need to start joining those squares together for my nature's walk blanket. But I do need to block the squares first, so I need to do that. That is going to be a bit of a pain because it's going to take quite a lot of room. And over Christmas there was no chance that I was going to be pinning um, squares all over the house. So I should really get on with that during this week before the next podcast really. I will try and do that. <laughs> So that's all the things that I'm trying to get on with. <laughs> um, so I shall talk about my make nine plans for sewing. I'm not going to be talking about dressmaking plans today, um, but it's all the things to do with sort of house items and quilting, etc., that I want to get ticked off my list because I don't get it done. And if I haven't got a list, I always forget to do things. So make nine sewing plans. I've got a list here. 
um, and they're not always they haven't always got photographs but you'll understand what I mean when I get to them so number one on the list I need to make some sewing machine covers so for a start this machine here it's got a plastic cover on I need to make a nice quilted one for that that'd be lovely and I've also got two sewing machines um, in front of me that need um, covers for as well because they've just got plastic covers my main machine that I use is a quilt expression um, 4.2 it has like a big solid cover to go over the top so I, I'm not going to bother making a cover for that but the other ones desperately need nice pretty covers to cover them <laughs> so that's on my list number two on my list is some storage pods um, for my zips because I have a lot of zips because <laughs> I'm obviously I make bags for my online shop um, but I need somewhere to store them that's that's more exciting than shoving them in a box. So I've decided that I'm going to use um, a pattern that's like a pod. So I'm going to grab my thread catcher over here, which is embarrassingly full of thread and looks all messy. <laughs> but I made this from a pattern from a website called Love From Beth. Um, and sh this was supposed to be just like a storage pod I suppose I, I think they I think that it was called a storage pod but I will put a picture um of the pattern on the screen so that you can see what it's supposed to look like not just what I've made <laughs> but she does do a longer one that um sort of hangs a little bit more so I thought I could make them to hang up perhaps on the bar at the back here and have little pods to have my zips stored instead of just hanging yarn <laughs> to look pretty and actually have a function for it so that's on my list as well so that's a pattern from love from beth and i'll put the link to that in the show notes i've got a few walls in our house that are very empty so plan um first thing to make a wall hanging is to go in the bedroom because the walls are really bare in there um our color scheme is like a gray and a sort of deep uh purple so something like that i'm thinking maybe i could do something with organza and some free motion stitching um using that soluble material that would be fun so watch out for that um, I have some cushions that I'm planning on making for the living room so if you've watched the vlogmas videos or the podcast just before Christmas you'll know that I got a weaving loom and I've been weaving a piece of clasped weft weaving where it's like a, a turquoisey blue green and white um, and I'm making that to make cushions for the living room so I've already sort of started this bit <laughs> so once I've made the material I'll then make those into cushion covers for the living room and that'll be something else handmade in the living room um so that that's next that's number four on my list number five is a coffee table runner so we've got a coffee table in the middle of our living room um and i want to have something on there so we saves having like sort of sort of coasters all the time and it's something pretty that i can put mugs on <laughs> Um, I'm thinking there's a sort of Bargello twist um, that I found a pattern for. If I can remember who wrote the pattern, I will um, put it in the show notes. If not, I shall talk about it a bit more um, when I come to actually making it. Um, I've got that or a piece that I'd started ages ago which is by Helen Butcher, which is called Yellow Brick Road. I will pop a picture up here of what the pattern actually looks like, but I started it in um, some sort of bluey greens because that's my favourite colours. <laughs> um, so I might actually finish that off, that off and make it a coffee table runner instead. So either of those two ideas. Next on my list is a coat for Luna Lapin, who's up there. She's, uh, she's out of a book um, and the coat on the front cover of the book was just amazing so I need to make that to make her look a bit more wintry I suppose so I ought to get on with that soon um, next on the list is reusable kitchen wipes now we use kitchen roll in our kitchen it's a lot of kitchen lots of lot of use of the word kitchen in that sentence oh dear <laughs> Um, but I found a tutorial on YouTube that showed um, that you could use squares of um, like a toweling material and a pretty fabric um, to make little wipes and then they can be stuck in the washing machine and reused rather than wasting um, paper really, kitchen roll. Um, so that might be fun to have a go at. Um, again there's a space in the living room that needs a wall hanging there so whether that'll be um one that's quilted or a bit more sort of 
um art inspired we'll see we'll see how that goes um and then oh christmas things one last thing on the list i need to make a fairy for the christmas tree and i found a pattern in one of my tilda books which had a smaller um fairy in because <laughs> If you were watching a couple of years ago, I made this huge fairy, well, like angel thing, and thought she'll be fine for the top of the tree. She looked absolutely ridiculous. So I have found a smaller pattern, and I'm going to make a little fairy, which she's probably going to be about this big to go on the top of the tree. I will check to see whether it's the right size before I end up completely finishing her and then decided, oh dear, too big. I'm sure she'll be fine this time. I'm more aware of how big the fairy needs to be on the top of the tree. So that's all my sort of sewing plans that don't include dressmaking for this year. Um, I hope you find that a bit inspiring. I'm sorry I haven't got photos for everything, but um, I'm really excited to get things for the house made so that I can sort of feel like I've got more of a homemade house, if that makes sense so embroidery targets this time so i started this flipping ages ago and look i've got loads to do <laughs> so it's a vintage cross stitch pattern that i picked up from a charity shop but i absolutely love this it's got some beautiful colors especially this blue green tree there really lovely so i'm going to work on this this year and try and get it finished <laughs> famous last words <laughs> Um, so I've got that cross stitch but I've also got another cross stitch and I'm keeping this one in the lovely bag that Davina sent me from Little Workroom Crafts um, and it's it's a beautiful bookmark so that's what the pattern looks like and I picked it up from the um, Festival of Quilts last year and I did actually make a start to it and you can see how very little I've done <laughs> so I've done that much so far so i'm hoping to finish this one as well i was thinking that because it was a bookmark it would be quite quick but it's actually there's quite a bit of work in there still to do um third on my embroidery targets is to do some stuff out of this book and i had this as a beautiful present from my friend peggy and i have not had chance to actually do anything from it yet but the first thing i think i want to do is a little cover for a tape measure which i should have put a bookmark in here but i'm not that organized so i didn't and i'm having to flick through it so oh this page is a good one it's got lots of things in so there's a tape measure cover there um but to be honest everything in this book is gorgeous so this is by lorna bateman um so it's embroidered country gardens but oh i love her style it's absolutely gorgeous so i'm hoping to do some of those um and also to continue with some ribbon embroidery i i started some a little while ago which is up here i did finish this piece but i haven't done any since um which is this little heart with some ribbon embroidery on it and i really enjoyed that so i'd really like to do some more and i did actually buy a load of ribbons to do it with so there we go that's my embroidery sort of targets for this year as well um i've just got some confessions next they're not naughty ones so i promise um after this i'm just going to go through the um make alongs and cows that i've got planned for the rest of the year but this week i've had some lovely presents because i may have had a birthday <laughs> in the last week um mainly i've um had a few crafty things but i've got some money so i might be you might be seeing some um yarn related things coming in the next week's podcast <laughs> so this first one is a knitting book and it's another lucy Haig book i've got another one of hers um i had for a little a little while ago which i haven't actually i really need to cast one of her patterns on i absolutely love these sort of celtic knot motifs i would love to make this blanket it's gorgeous and then there's a jumper and look at that celtic knot on the back absolutely gorgeous so there's this motif is on the front of this jumper as well there is a shawl in here as well um, but again i'm not very organized <laughs> i haven't put a bookmark in so that is the jumper that's in this book and i love it what i might do though is make it into a cardigan because i think it'd be more wearable and just have the motif on the back um, because I think it might look a bit weird on my boobs <laughs> it might accentuate the boob area we don't want to do that 
oh dear so the shawl is this one isn't that gorgeous that's a lovely shawl as well but there are a few shawls with um these sort of celtic motifs in her other book that i've got that i want to do so mainly this blanket and the jumper or oh, my cardigan version i want to make out of that I've had this book on my wish list for forever. It's gorgeous stump work embroidery. So actually this could go with my embroidery targets as well. It's got some really gorgeous patterns. Um, there is some sort of examples of little drawstring bags in here as well with the um, stitchery on, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. But stump work is like 3D embroidery where bits stick out. Let me find one that looks a bit more obvious. Um, so there's an apple mint one there where the leaves are sticking right out really pretty things I love 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 this dill pouch that there is so pretty I really want to be doing some more embroidery this year so there are a lot of examples of how you can have leaves and petals that stick out from the work I'm, I'm trying to show you on a flat piece of <laughs> on a flat piece of paper oh dear anyway <laughs> on the back there's some strawberries how cute but there's so many lovely patterns in here so the book's by Sashiko Morimoto um and it's just called stump work flowers and adam actually got this off my um my wish list off amazon so that was from adam i think actually both of these were from adam he's very good he knows that crafting things are the most important birthday presents <laughs> i also got a little sewing needle case which has all the needles and you twist the bottom and they come out and it's basically got a magnet in there so that you can pick out what needles you like and I think that's brilliant so this is a prim product and you can get it from Amazon um, I haven't actually used the needles out of there but the amount of times that I've opened and shut this because it looks really cool <laughs> I love it so I shall leave a link in the show notes to that one as well but I picked that up well Adam got it from me from Amazon because it was on my Amazon wish list. Anyway, that's all my naughty confessions, but they're not too naughty because they were birthday presents, so that's okay. <laughs> so, make alongs and knit alongs for this year. So, I've already talked about two on the podcast already. We've got the Retro Mal, which is in the Ravelry group, um, and that's all things that are sort of for not the noughties, really. Any links to projects that you've actually not touched since the 80s or something, brilliant. I'd love to see your old projects and any links to um, television, films, anything sort of retro at all. So if it's older, that's fine, absolutely brilliant. So come and join us over in the Ravelry group. Um, we've. I've also, I'm just gonna start a little mini knit along which is for the around the corner shawl and that'll just be on instagram with the hashtag around the corner shawl c h m cal um and i will post about this um as soon as i start with the hashtag so you can go and look what the hashtag is from looking at my instagram instagram account if that makes sense so that will run till the end of february and then we have to have a shawl along every year so that'll run from the beginning of march till the end of may um and june we can have the summer sock along so that will run from june to august and then the festive craft along september till the end of december so we're back around again to christmas <laughs> so that is the plan so far um there might be some other craft alongs going on, on instagram for instance or some more ravelry make alongs we shall see if you have any suggestions i'm very open to opening different make alongs um because it's brilliant to be able to chat along and enjoy the making together so i think that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i'll see you next week bye